My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to make some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. At the end of a completely crazy week, a day where the Dow ultimately dipped 21 points, as it gained 0.52% from the Nasdaq, jumped 1.58%, we need to talk about today's red-hot employment. There was only one word for it, and it was horrific. Yep, when the Fed starts tightening, we enter the, the bizarre world, where good is bad and bad is good. Today's terrific job support means that the Fed has to raise rates, and maybe quickly. The Wall Street playbook says you should be selling a whole host of stocks in this kind of news. But that didn't happen today. And I wonder if it's because maybe we've already sold off in anticipation of a series of rate hikes, and maybe we're getting a little immunized. We already knew that the economy was overheated and that the Fed would have to raise rates, but we didn't expect that strong of an employment number. So we could actually take some time to smell the roses, roses like Amazon, which people bought at all costs, the same way they sold Facebook at all costs yesterday, because we have a little window before the Fed can move. Now, when you see a gargantuan stock like Amazon up 13.5% in a day, you need to be thinking of it like an IPO. Brokers are fighting to get their hands on a fixed quantity of hot stock in the end. And there are just so, so few sellers and so many large buyers. When Amazon broke out above 3,100, I said it could rally easily another 100 points. Turns out we already got halfway there by the close. I knew this would happen because institutional buyers lose all discipline at moments like this. They want the stock so desperately that they just stop being sensitive to price. We got the same thing after hours when Peloton spiked after we heard some chatter that Amazon might be considering a takeover bid, among others. There's no price they won't stop buying it. We saw the flip side of that yesterday with Meta Facebook. Yesterday it was down at 250, okay? Already big, big decline. I knew there were accounts willing to dump it as low as 237. That's incredible. But their minds were already made up. They didn't care what price they got. You care. I care. They didn't. What does it mean? It means we have to be very careful about high-flying stocks when we scrutinize our game plan for next week because if they go bad, it's Katie bar the door. And there's only been a couple that have, we, and we'll go over them later that really have made it so that you're okay in high-priced earnings, high price to sales stories. On Monday, I hope J-Pal's busy because we're going to hear from Tyson Foods, the meat company that's at the epicenter of our current food shortage. Now, I don't expect to find out why my wife couldn't get bacon on her bacon cheeseburger last week, but I do expect to hear about the herds and how much they cost to maintain versus kill. Uh, next, are people still gaming with the fervor that we saw earlier in the pandemic? We talk about this every minute of the day, even with ATT. Well, we'll find out when take two interactive reports after the close because Strauss Zelnick, is the straightest of straight shooters. And if it's, if demand is weaker, he's just going to say it. We'll also find out about how shopping's going on at the mall. This is a really easy, good conference call. It's from Simon Property Group. They do it the best. They tell the truth. Seven pages. You can get through it. Tuesday's a curious admixture. We have a bunch of healthcare stories at once. There's Centene, the health insurance specialty uh, that specializes in government-sponsored sp programs. I think it's a takeover target. I still think it can go higher. And same goes, well, yeah, we're going to figure out what Pfizer's going to do. It's going to be fantastic, but... Well, I don't think anyone's going to really buy it off the quarter. Now, the one I care the most about on Tuesday is Chipotle because I think it could do low double-digit same-store sales versus last year's already excellent numbers, and that should cause the stock to ignite. Raw costs are always a problem in the business, though, but I think that the, it's going to be respectable. I worry about raw costs at DuPont, too. The great industrials have had a real up-and-down time in this market, and I fear this could be DuPont's downtime, which is why we've finally decided to ring the register for a terrific profit for the charitable trust. It was just too difficult to own a bunch of these industrials. We're walking around with them. Oh, man, we never seem to really get a handle on them right now. How could we have a handle on a business when the people running the companies may not have it themselves? And then there's Peloton, the stock th that everyone has given up on except the users. We need the air clear. We need to know what they said, why they didn't raise any money. Uh, and then well, I said they didn't need any to raise money. And then they raised money, which is why the stock collapsed. And now, on top of all that, the Wall Street Journal is reporting after the bell that Amazon has approached the company about a potential deal. I doubt they made that story up. Will they face the music and bike? 
Okay, I thought of it midday. I had to use it. Wednesday could uh, lead to some fireworks. Okay, first, I expect a very good quarter from CBS, COVID testing, what happens next, how they monetize the vaccination seekers. That would take it to the next level, maybe 110, 120. Also in the morning, here's an aisle on PepsiCo. The stock came in today for what I regard as no good reason. I'd be a buyer ahead of the quarter. But then after the close, we get the most controversial story of the week, and that is Disney. The Travel Trust owns it, and you can hear my comments about from this uh, afternoon's investing club meeting. I think Disney isn't getting enough credit for its incredibly valuable intellectual property. This isn't Netflix. It isn't Facebook. It's a once-in-a-kind growth vehicle. It is not stagnant. It is not dead. And that's why I'd like to build a bigger position ahead of the quarter for my trust. We have had another Wednesday that's been very good for us. Mattel! Yeah, I think there could be a whole new slate of toys and entertainment from CEO Enon Cries, who's been the turnaround whiz. Have you seen that stock? I said this morning that Coca-Cola should have a good quarter, and we find out next Thursday. I want to know about the joint efforts with Molson Coors to make the hard-to-stock Topo Chico hard seltzer. I think this is the next big spike. Next what? Twitter. Now, is Twitter the next Facebook? It will be the next Amazon. Is it the next Google? How about Pinterest? I think we'll find out that it remains the same old plotting Twitter when it reports. A company that has nothing we truly want to pay up for. Isn't that the problem? The stock comes down enough to de-risk a disaster, but that's certainly not a reason to buy it. If you paid to have someone to take out all the terrible stuff, well, that would be good, but no one, they're not going to do that for you. Want a high multiple stock that used to be a fantastic momentum play? Hey, I got, we got an important test case Thursday. We got two of them. First, Cloudflare reports. Cloudflare, remember that? That thing never took a break. It's all about streaming growth and the cybersecurity angle. When it ran in north of $200 in the fall, it was one of the most expensive stocks in the entire market. And then it led on the way down when these stocks fell out of favor. I do expect great numbers, but I don't expect anyone to care. Zendesk also reports Thursday. This is an also-ran provider of cloud-based customer relationship management software, which peaked almost exactly a year ago. There wasn't much to be interested in here until they decided to acquire Momentive, the company formerly known as SurveyMonkey in October. Then an activist investor, Jana Partners, got involved and urged them uh, no to the deal. Jan is very powerful. We're going to look for an update on that situation when they report. They were all over us to tell us it was a great deal. Okay, Friday we get the results from Under Armour, and there's lots of good buzz about this one. So, so, so much so that I think it's actually terrific speculation going in the quarter. We keep hearing about a potential turnaround. Maybe this time it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And then we have two really intriguing cyclicals. Both have been, have been on the show a couple of times. I want to spend a second on it. Cleveland Cliffs and Goodyear Tire. You know that I've liked and praised both of them. I think that Goodyear will positively dazzle. Many are looking for a used shortfall from Cleveland Cliffs, the uh, iron ore company that became a major steel producer. Like Nucor, the fantastic steel maker we own for the trust, I'm betting actually the Cleveland Cliffs will do a decent number. Vertically integrated, uh, integrated, can make a heck of a lot more money than they used to, cleaned up balance sheet, good management. Bottom line, this week we saw the true colors of what is a treacherous market. Specifically, we learned it has a bipolar disorder. Now, I think that the best text for this market isn't really financial. It's uh, K. Redfield Jameson's An Unquiet Mind. And if you don't believe me, there's no level it won't be taken up to. But if it's hated, there are no depths it won't sink to. Either way, boy, that is unquiet mind to a T. It's likely to be an extreme. Kevin in Missouri. Kevin! Hey, first-time caller, so thanks for taking my call. Booyah. Mm -hmm. um, so my question's around Abbott Laboratories. Uh, back in March of 2021, um, you remember they announced that $255 million contract um, with the uh, Binax Now Rapid COVID test. So in December, when I heard uh, about all the shortages and the demand was higher than ever, um, I ended up buying uh, close to 300 shares at 140 a share. Really? It's, okay. Yeah, it's dropped $11 um, just today. So I, or I mean, not just today, no, but up to today. $11. Well, I'll tell I you, I, I said some very positive things about it today at the investment club. I said that they, rate, they did a lot of money, made a lot of money from buying X now, but they are going to get no credit for it. So they have to basically do something with that money, deploy it somehow, and then it will be fine. In the meantime, the Libra, the diabetes, uh, uh, the, the glucose monitor is selling very well. That's the reason to own it. Let's go to Kurt in Virginia. Kurt. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Long I'm time doing viewer well. And first-time caller. And Jim, I love your enthusiasm. I'm retired, but I used to schlep a lot of office products in my day, and I can relate to you. And I like taking schnitzels to take care of my RMDs. In my 401ks. But kicking the tires, Jim, I was out looking for a PC, 
Walked in Best Buy. It's been a while. Pretty impressive store. Did end up buying a PC with uh, the lady you like, the Ryzen 5 AMD processor. They have that subscription service, Tech. Jamie, your thoughts? Is there enough I think it's so right. I think that, that uh, I, actually, I think that Corey Barry's on, totally under. I'm going to get her on the show. Why? 3% yield. They're going to have a good quarter. There are a lot of people who feel that maybe we are, we've are we bought all the equipment we need to be able to stay home and do things. You know that's not the case. Kurt, I've got to tell you, I think under 100, I find it a quizzical price because the stock used to be at 140, and it's very good, decent balance sheet, great supply chain. I'm with you. I think that I think that BBY is a winner. All right. This week, we learned a lot about the true colors of this treacherous market, didn't we? Uh, if a stock is loved, there's no level it won't be taken to. Oh, but if it's hated, there's no depths it won't go. It's an unquiet-minded market. On Man Money Tonight, after reporting a strong fourth quarter, could Columbia Sportswear continue to dress your portfolio for success? I'm talking to the CEO. Then, this has been by far the hardest earnings season in recent memory. So what can we learn for it? Because there's a twist that's dragging things down. And could a company supporting laboratories across the world be what their portfolio needs in this market? I'm talking to the CEO of Waters. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.